Hello there. Today our favorite segment, which features the brightest knockouts in the history of world boxing, will once again delight fans of spectacular, beautiful boxing. The attempt by the 7-foot, 1-inch giant Julius Long to seek revenge against prospect Hemia Hio, who defeated him on points in March 2019, ended unsuccessfully. The rematch took place on February 27, 2021. In the fourth round, Long almost avenged himself, sending a Hio to the canvas. Just getting predictable there. He's starting to walk in and do the same thing. However, he failed to finish off his opponent, and soon he regretted the lack of predator instinct. Hemi's powerful left hook in the seventh round almost knocked the spirit out of the giant. I'll tell you what, if he goes down, I don't think he's going to get up. I think it'll be like George Foreman, just down out of sheer exhaustion. Now has he not gone down? Go. The ropes are keeping him up. Ten seconds to go in the round. Here he goes! And he's down! And he's down! And he's down! He's chopped by a tree! The towel is coming! Four. On July 13th, 2019, in a battle of sturdy heavyweight gatekeepers, American Gerald Washington achieved an impressive victory over Finn Robert Hellenius. The closely contested match had a slight advantage for the European boxer, but in the eighth round, Washington increased the pace, catching his unprepared opponent off guard. The decisive moment came with a powerful right hook, sending Hellenius into a heavy knockout. The 10th defense of the WBC title in the Bantamweight division by the Japanese master Hozumi Hasegawa on December 18, 2009, against Nicaraguan contender Alvaro Perez was incredibly spectacular. From the start, Perez aggressively attacked the champion. Perhaps Hasegawa did not expect such intensity from his opponent, and in the initial two rounds, he looked slightly awkward taking a few heavy blows from the Latin American. By the third round, Hasegawa completely adapted, taking control of the fight. And in the fourth, he knocked out Perez with an excellent left hook. On February 14, 2020, young Ryan Garcia made a significant statement, brutally annihilating two-time world title contender Francisco Fonseca. Ryan's powerful left strike sent the Nicaraguan into a heavy knockout in the first round. He needs to set it up with fast jabs. You can see on the front of Ryan Garcia's trunks, he's got images of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, who passed away tragically last month in that helicopter. Oh, and a left hand sends Fonseca down, flat on his back, it's over, there he's done it again, Ryan Garcia, there is a new tank in the 100- On May 20th, 2017, 
young Daniel Dubois got another knockout victory in the professional ring, brilliantly destroying compatriot David Howe. Already at the beginning of the first round, a heavy blow from the Big Britain on the right knocked out the journeyman. Obey my command at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Now, wasn't this meant to be the first contest? Wasn't this meant to be the right. debut John, as you say? But yeah, Dubois took him on the pads many times. He's very, very strong. Oh, oh big goodness me, that's the right hand. First big punch that connects, and I think that's over. I think that's going to be good night so far as Dave Howe's concerned. He literally doesn't know what it is. On November 26th, 2011, the young Deontay Wilder easily added another victory to his record. The American's signature right-hand blow knocked out David Long in the first round. Hey. That's Deontay Wilder, the referee. I like that about American referees because they generally do a massive, they generally do a massive count when the guys are on the That was a good finish. It was a great finish. I mean, yeah. we, you know, we, we, took, we you know we took the Mickey out of Americans and people having these lovings of Americans. But wouldn't it be great if an American heavyweight come up? On December 4th, 1961, the legendary Sonny Liston, in anticipation of a title fight, warmed up against Albert Westfall, who was no star. Clearly fearing his formidable opponent, Westfall tried to keep his distance from the grim knockout artist. But as Joe Lewis said, you can run, but you can't hide. Liston's powerful right-hand blow knocked the opponent into a heavy knockout in the first round. Missing some of his punches in this first round. Liston making them count. Westfall has never been knocked off his feet until now. That's the first time Westfall's ever been on the floor. Count is six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The fight is over in the first round. Albert Westfall caught a combination left and right, and as you saw, the right set him down. On September 26, 2020, young Philip Hergovich easily overcame, let's say directly, not the most difficult obstacle in the form of Georgian boxer Alexander Kortosia. A powerful right-hand blow from the Croatian sent his opponent into a knockout already in the second round. Kartozija se od ovoga neće moći oporaviti. Ostao presječen Grk ovdje i osjetio je što znači razorni udarac Filipa Hrgovića. Prič je kraj u Danskoj i Hrgović. On December 6, 2003, Vitaly Klitschko gave no chance to the sturdy Canadian Kirk Johnson, who had only lost once before this fight, and that was due to disqualification. The bout concluded in the second round, where the Ukrainian giant twice sent his opponent to the canvas. After Johnson's second flight to the ring mat, the referee immediately signaled the end of the match. On October 3rd, 2009, Ukrainian Oleg Yefimovich vividly defended the European title in the super featherweight division, destroying the experienced British fighter Isham Pickering in front of Donetsk fans. Oleg controlled the course of the fight from its beginning, already in the second round twice knocking down the opponent on the canvas. In the third round, Yefimovich's powerful left hook conclusively ended the uneven championship contest.
On October 31, 2020, Mexican Isaac Pitbull Cruz fully justified his nickname in a bout with former world championship contender Diego Magdaleno. Incredibly aggressive, Cruz forced Magdaleno to endure an unpleasant referee count early in the first round. And after the match resumed, he brutally finished him with a relentless series of strikes. The destruction of the seasoned opponent took only 53 seconds. After such a defeat, Diego decided to end his career. His career. And we have Fistics to kick off this fourth fight fiesta. It's all Esau Cruz. Right uppercut, another right uppercut. And Magdaleno goes down. Mamma mia, what a start. On display this. Yeah, very. Uh, uh, for this young man who. Many people believe at age 22 already a six-year veteran is special. On November 18th, 2017, South African boxer Zolani Tete set a world record by defending his WBA Bantamweight title with lightning speed. The champion's compatriot, Sibonis Ogonya, got destroyed in a matter of seconds. Tete's perfect right hand brutally cut down the challenger already at the start of the fight. The South African needed only 11 seconds to annihilate his opponent. One of the great avoided fighters. I think very much so. John is an, uh, an avoided man indeed. Oh, and that's the reason why. Goodness me, first punch of the fight, and it's all over. He's knocked him unconscious. The fight is all over with the first punch of the fight. Extraordinary shot from Zelani Tate. Medical man straight into the ring. A mere hardcore Mansoor rarely left spectators indifferent. On August 27, 2010, the force of the American's punches was fully tested by one Samuel Brown. In the first round, Mansoor forced his opponent to endure an unpleasant referee count. And after the fight resumed, he brutally knocked out his opponent with a powerful right-hand blow. A cold knockout face down. Not for the faint-hearted. On June 24, 2003, Joe Macy, in his characteristic aggressive style, dealt with journeyman Robert Davis. Macy, in the first round, knocked Davis to the canvas twice. And after the second fall, the fight was stopped. The defeated fighter lay on the canvas for a long time, surrounded by concerned members of his team. And that's it. That's it. Left hook right here. Left hook right in. Right on the money. On September 5, 1985, the 19-year-old rising star Mike Tyson secured another early victory, this time against journeyman Michael Johnson. Right from the start of the first round, the underdog experienced a significant knockdown, and shortly after the fight resumed, he was brutally knocked out by a powerful right punch. Right to the body, left jab, right to the heart. Quickly want to point out, first fight for Michael Jack Johnson in two years. I'm glad you pointed it out because down he goes, the left hook just buried him, dug him in the ribs. I think it was a and Michael left and Jack a right. Johnson went goodbye. That left hook just caught him and sent him canvas. 23 pound weight oh, advantage and he put the it all right, there. The right to the head and it's all over. Goodbye. I hope he's not hurt because that was a brutal wide open punch. 
He did not have his guard up, and Mike Tyson just <laughs> Michael Jack Johnson a big smile, but it is. On July 18, 2008, the talented Cuban Yuri Orcas Gamboa announced himself with a swift annihilation of the experienced and usually durable former U.S. contender Ella Seeger, who had lasted eight rounds with dangerous punchers like Daniel Ponce de Leon. Unlike de Leon, the Cuban boxer, significantly faster than his opponent, simply did not allow Seeger to showcase his acting abilities. Gamboa's perfect right strike concluded the unequal bout. Physically, for this, oh! Seager did not. Wow! Gamboa! Huge right hand! And again, it came on the inside as Seager was trying to grab. Yuri Arcus Gamboa! The match between WBC lightweight champion Alexis Arguello and Andy Gannigan turned out to be incredibly fierce and dramatic. The confrontation between the two recognized knockout artists could not be boring. The Hawaiian had a better start, knocking the champion down in the first round. Gathering his strength, the legendary Nicaraguan withstood the onslaught and in the third round paid back the debt forcing the opponent to endure an unpleasant count from the referee. The climax occurred in the fifth round, when Arguello's fierce series put an end to the resistance of the brave contender. Knocks him back with a jab, and a good solid left jab lands. And another. Arguello almost inexorably taking control as we come into the final seconds of round five. He landed a big combination, and then I think a big right hand will send him to the canvas. Yes, uh, before that right hand. Equally dramatic and spectacular was the clash of punchers Dominic Brazil and Azugba Agano, which took place on February 25th, 2017. The beginning of the fight favored the underdog. But in the third round, Brazil seized the moment and sent him to the canvas. The poll didn't stay behind, and in the fourth round, his opponent had to show willpower by rising from the knockdown. The spectacular conclusion came in the fifth round. Dominic aggressively moved forward, sending Ogono to his second knockdown. And when the fight continued, he forcefully pushed him out of the ropes with a fierce attack. The referee waved it off without starting the count. At the time of the fight stoppage, the losing boxer was leading on points. On April 28, 2001, Kirk Johnson vividly knocked out journeyman Derek Banks, ending the bout in the first round. Johnson's powerful left hand stunned the opponent, and after an intense series of blows, Johnson knocked Banks out of the ring. You're the voice of Buddy McGurk, former world oh, champion. Banks, Banks is hurt, Larry. He got wobbled. Gotta stay up, gets through the ropes, and he falls down. That was a frightening knockout. Banks appears to be okay. Tonya, he hit his head on the cement floor here in the Laporte Civic Auditorium as he went through the ropes. He, hit, he flipped head over heels. On March 17, 2001, former world champion Henry Akinwande easily navigated past Peter McNeely. The Nigerian giant controlled the match from the beginning, sending his opponent to the canvas twice in the first round. In the second round, Akinwande's powerful right punch delivered an impressive knockout. 
φαίνεται πάρα πολύ ο Πίτερ Μαθήλη που γονατίζει και πάλι με ένα δεξί που... Κι άλλο δυνατό δεξί και ένα ακόμη... Ένα θηρίο είναι ο Μακνίλη, όμως ο Ακινουάντε είναι πραγματικά ένας πυγμάχος με φοβερές δυνατότητες. Έτως έχει δείξει βέβαια όλη η πορεία του και όχι μόνο αυτός ο αγώνας. On November 17th, 2001, Venezuelan Jose Roja made his second attempt in his career to seize the championship title, facing WBA super featherweight champion Yober Ortega. Roja looked good during the fight, and after three rounds, he even slightly edged ahead on all three judges' scorecards. However, in the fourth round, a powerful right strike from his compatriot ended Jose's quest for the title in the most emphatic way. On March 7, 1985, seasoned Herman Montez got the biggest victory in his career, breaking the resistance of former world champion Pepino Cuevas. In the third round of a fierce and stubborn fight, the American delivered a hard left hook, which sent the veteran into a heavy knockout. Y los dos en un cambio de golpes espectacular. Izquierda de Pepino. Izquierda de Montes y Pipino se va a la lona. Tremenda izquierda conectó Germán Montes. Al tiempo que Pipino... On January 29th, 2017, experienced Cameroonian Carlos Tecom made a spectacular return to the ring after his defeat to Joseph Parker. The unfortunate victim turned out to be Polish strongman Martin Bacole. Carlos's ferocious combination, ending with a heavy left-hand blow, put an end to the confrontation in the fourth round. What the stretchers? No, don't touch them. The dock. The dock. Don't touch them. 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 Don't touch forcing his opponent to think about his own defense. The fight was sealed with Zhang's powerful left-hand punch, sending Vargas into a heavy knockout. Well, the first half of the fight, and if he can, if he can come into another big fight, not, not take too much time off, I would love to Ooh. see that. Counter left hand and a big one by the Big Bang. Oh, he checked him with that Three. right hook. That was Five. nice. Looks like it hurt his Six. leg. Six, seven, eight. And he says it's his knee, and that Ten. is it. Jay Lee oh, Zhang, Dabucha, with stay a down. knockout. The fight against South African Mazonka Fana, whose aspirations the great Marco Antonio Barrera defended the WBC title in the lightweight division, became one of the easiest in the career of the legendary Mexican. The bout took place on April 9th, 2005. From the very beginning, Barrera completely seized the initiative, showing the contender who the boss in the ring was and that even relying on a lucky punch was not worth it. In the second round, Marco Antonio's excellent right straight sent the African boxer into a heavy knockout. And, uh, what if so? Вот чего добивался Баррера с самого первого раунда, с первой минуты, с первых секунд. Вот такой победы. Оно видно было, оно прочитывалось по его поведению. 
Ему нужна была эта победа. On September 29, 2006, seasoned British middleweights Jamie Moore and Matthew Macklin engaged in an incredibly fierce and brutal fight. The intense battle, where the fighters exchanged heavy blows, captivated the entire arena in Manchester. Moore emerged victorious, delivering a ferocious series of punches in the 10th round that knocked Macklin out face forward. His chin's down, his hands are up. I'm going to get caught clean up with that one. Yeah, nice uppercut. That hurt Jamie Moore. And Macklin piles on the... This is a hard, hard fight. And who is the harder man? It's a good right hand from Macklin. Who will feel that one? He actually dropped... What training Matthew Macklin has done. Hats off to Billy Graham, Kerry Kays and the team. Oh, that could be Curtis. He won't get up from that. Tenth round, Macklin's out. Fight's over. No celebration for Jamie Moore because the doctors will need to come. On April 22, 1992, in a matchup of former victims of Mike Tyson, Frank Bruno and Jose Rabalta, the first emerged victorious. In the second round, the sturdy Briton unleashed a furious series of punches, sending the Cuban veteran into a heavy knockout. End of a career. He's looking quite young and spiky. That's a good right hand, and the man's right above me, and he's almost coming out on top of me. And down goes Rivalda, and what, what are people going to say about that? Was that a bum opponent? Everybody said he was a good one. He's knocked out. Round two, Bruno's won again. Now what are they going to say? The big punch of Bruno has absolutely rendered him unconscious. On December 31st, 2011, Takashi Uchiyama successfully defended the WBA title in the lightweight division against the experienced Mexican challenger Jorge Solis who had shared the ring, albeit with an unsuccessful result, with fighters like Manny Pacquiao and Yuriorkis Gamboa. The Japanese boxer controlled the course of the match, confidently accumulating rounds. Solis resiliently withstood all heavy hits, trying to respond whenever possible. However, he couldn't hear the final bell. In the 11th round, Uchiyama, taking advantage of the tired challenger's lapse in concentration, delivered a brutal left strike that sent the Mexican into a deep knockout, where he lay for several minutes. Jorge had an unpleasant New Year's Eve. <laughs> On August 7, 1999, the relentless Brazilian knockout artist Acelino Freitas captured the WBO lightweight title from Russian Anatoly Alexandrov, greatly alarming the residents of Cannes, France, where the bout took place. The charged Brazilian aggressively attacked Alexandra from the opening bell, and soon the Russian heard an unpleasant referee count. As soon as the fight resumed, Freitas finished what he started. Acelino's fierce combination left the Russian boxer in a deep knockout. Alexandra regained consciousness only five minutes later, leaving the ring on a stretcher. On October 22, 2011, Marco Huck once again pleased German fans by defending his WBO cruiserweight title against the challenges of the brave and resilient Argentine Rogelio Omar Rossi. The Serbian boxer with a German passport, despite traditionally weak defense, controlled the course of the fight. In the third and twice in the fifth rounds, Rossi was counted for knockdowns. 
Hawk concluded the fight with a precise right-hand punch in the sixth round, sending Rossi into a knockout. Jetzt nicht mehr so wild und überfallartig nach den äh, eindringlichen Ermahnungen seines Trainers in der Pause, aber dann in der Nahdistanz. Ich glaube, das ist der Kurs. Canadian David Lemieux, as a rule, never left his fans indifferent. Because this frantic fighter simply does not know how to box boringly. On October 12, 2012, Mexican Alvaro Gaona experienced the full weight of the fists of the ex-world champion from Montreal. As befits a true Mexican warrior, the underdog did not run away from the formidable favorite but bravely got involved in an open fight with him. An unpleasant bell for Gaona came at the end of the first round, when he found himself on the floor of the ring after an accurate blow from David on the right. After the fight resumed, the Mexican recklessly tried to get even, but almost immediately missed a brutal left hook, which put an end to the fight. Terrible knockout! On October 4, 1996, the great Roy Jones defended his IBF super middleweight title against the promising Bryant Brannan. Brannan, undefeated until that bout, experienced the bitter taste of defeat as Jones effortlessly controlled the match. In the second round, while finishing his opponent, Jones suggested to the referee to stop the fight, citing Brannan's inability to defend himself. However, the third man in the ring ordered the fight to continue. Roy's precise series ended in a brutal knockout. He was so calm, weathering that storm, blocking punches, just looking to set the other guy up. Their power over that extended arc. Every punch is being blocked by Roy Jones. And he lets the guy throw his punches and he says, okay, now it's my turn. To defend his WBC title in the Super Bantamweight division, Toshiaki Nishioka did not hesitate to travel to distant Mexico. His opponent was the experienced former world champion Johnny Gonzalez. The beginning of the fight favored the larger Mexican, who knocked Nishioka down in the first round. <laughs> However, in the third minute, the Japanese boxer drastically turned the tide, knocking Johnny down with an excellent left straight. Assessing the tough condition of the contender, the referee rightly signaled the end of the fight. Bueno, 
Sí, la verdad es que yo pienso que Johnny González está un poquito eh, desubicado, no se para bien al final sus combinaciones y eso pues le puede traer consecuencias. Sí, señores, la tarjeta de Donama, Donama. 10 puntos para González, 9 puntos para Yoka. El japonés tiene... On September 14, 1958, the legendary Ingemar Johansson brutally dealt with the undefeated Eddie Machen. The Swedish boxer calmly ended the fight in the first round, first knocking the opponent down twice in heavy knockdowns, and then sending him into a deep knockout with a furious series of blows. The weight of Ingemar's victory was added by the fact that a few years later, the American went the distance with such a recognized puncher as Sonny Liston.